What's up, all you nerds and losers? Welcome to the Wolf Den Podcast. How you doing? The reason I said that is because somebody in chat said, what's up, nerds and virgins? And I just, I don't know. It just got, it just got stuck it's, in my head. It's not good to assume things like that. <laughs> you don't know somebody's struggle. I mean, if they're watching this, you can assume. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, hello, everybody. Welcome. Uh, to the podcast. How are you doing, Will? Uh, I'm still getting used to this Frankenstein's monster of an ultra wide display that you so graciously let me borrow. So, um, so Will came to the studio last weekend, and uh, yes. I told him he could. Uh, there was an ultra wide just sitting there. It was my yeah. old Ben Q. Uh, I told him he could just take it, and uh, now it's now you're staring at it. <laughs> well, the, the, so the thing is, I'm in the market for a new monitor, and I want mm -hmm. one monitor to just use. I don't want to use my laptop monitor and a second monitor anymore. I want one monitor. Um, so I initially just wanted to borrow a monitor from you and like test drive it, so like know what size I need for my desk. And you said take the ultra wide. So I did, thinking, how bad could it be? <laughs> it's completely re redoing the way I'm used to working. I have to sit a certain way to look at the camera. I have to rearrange the screen. To yeah, but you don't need two monitors, though. It's, that's true, monitor. I don't. But I miss, Pretty cool. I miss moving something from one window to the other window. <laughs> That yes, I yeah, I see yeah. that. I I like having an ultra wide. It's the only reason I don't have an ultra wide is because of streaming. Streaming is just a lot easier, especially if you want to play a, a, yeah. a console game. It's just way easier to be able to have a dedicated monitor for the game and a dedicated monitor for for all your other stuff. Now there right. are some Samsung monitors that claim that they're dual monitors, but I don't know. It's like an ultra wide. Mm -hmm. but i don't know if they work the same like like they still have one display port input isn't that cool. technically just picture in picture <laughs> yes and i think you could okay. do it through hdmi like have an hdmi go on a section of the monitor and then display port on the other but it only has right. one display port so you can't do the two monitor thing which would be yeah. cooler for certain games that have issues like i think valorant no matter what will take up the full screen unless you do like a borderless window and then it gets all stupid right. so anyway we're going to be talking a lot about computer shit later on yeah. in the, the podcast. Because we're PC gamers now. Some shit broke. Yeah. I I am now. I am a PC I, gamer I know now. you are. I know I've been, you sold I've out. I drank the Kool-Aid and, and I I'm 100% still, sold out. I'm still a man of the people right here with <laughs> our console games. Uh, what else did I want to say to you? Uh, oh, another thing. Another weird thing. Some sh we're also going to talk about some. Th th there's a lot of weird computer stuff going on that just yeah. dropped today. Uh, another weird thing is that Twitch caps your bit rate while you're streaming at six thousand kilobits per second, which is six megabits per second. You understand? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, for partners, it's eight megabits per second. Now that's not nearly enough to do 1080p video at 60 frames per second it's not so that's why if you if you look at uh our stream that's why we stream on twitch at a really weird well what the fuck it's 720p whatever i usually <laughs> stream at like a weird resolution right i mm -hmm. usually stream at like 8 865p or something weird like that because that's like the highest you can get with it still looking good anyway uh, and everybody always asks me that Right now, I'm streaming at 10,000. I don't know why. It just it just says Twitch is accepting 10,000 kilobits per second. And that's like, yeah. a, that's like groundbreaking. And that'll play into the new NVIDIA graphics cards that came out, which we'll talk about <laughs> yes. later. Which is, which we'll which get, is yes. a very bizarre correlation, but it is big deal news. And I'll make you yeah. appreciate it. <laughs> uh anyway before we get into anything we're gonna we're also gonna talk about the first main topic is the grand theft auto five or six yes six we're up to six now if you know if you showed me it i wouldn't be i wouldn't i would say it's gta online <laughs> to be honest uh, um, yeah we're gonna talk about that stuff the leaks that happened and whatever but first i want to thank some of our subscribers like anthony corvini with uh four months uh sup guys hello uh, underscore 
Yeah, 21 minutes ago. Okay, that makes sense. He he subscribed right before we went live. Uh, thank you for the 56 months. Is that... How many years is that? Does he have a cool like, badge next to his name now? It's Emerald. He has an Emerald badge. The next badge above that is a rainbow badge, and I don't think I even made any badges after that. Um... Circa with 13 months. I ruined my sub streak last month. Dang it. I'm so sorry. Forgive me, Wolf Gods. Uh, you can't be forgiven. Uh, 56 months is four years and. Uh, no. Four, four years and four months? No. Yeah, four years and. Why are we so bad at this? It's just four years and eight months. By... Four, four years and eight months. Four years and eight months. I did it. I'm good at math. Oh my god! I have, I have my first badge, degree. but turned it off. What do you mean, first badge? You, it says right here. You. Oh, you're uh, like like first saying like you were the first guy. Anyway, uh, Niankus, thank you for the 29 months. First time I made it before the podcast started. Just wanted to say thanks for recommending Trigun. Are you guys excited for the remake? I still is it confirmed a remake? I am excited I, for it. I kind of I mean, want to rewatch it. The I mean from the trailer it looks like it's telling the exact same story with a different art style. So Does it? I thought I'm it was a, just I thought it was just flashbacks. I I mean they they cover all that though in regular Trigun. So it mu it's definitely a reboot of some kind. It's not like Badlands Rumble which is like a sequel. I don't or like know. a side story. I kind of hope it's not. I kind of hope they just uh do like a Spider-Man homecoming thing where they just throw you in, you know? Yeah. Uh, Because Trigun has a lot of like lore that isn't explained at all. And that's why it's yeah. so good. It's like Star Wars. Where they have all this lore that isn't explained and then they explain it and it's bad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Big Boche. Andor tomorrow. <laughs> I am excited for Andor. That looks sick. Yeah. Uh, hello, Will and Blob. Hello. Oh. And underscore resubscribe with 57 months. What the fuck, dude? You just subscribed <laughs> 23 minutes ago. You subscribed 56 months and now you just, how do you do that? <laughs> Twitch is doing some weird away. shit. Yeah, Not yeah. only did they just ban gambling and half, or uh, there's fucking half of their, uh, 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 big Twitch streamers are either sexual predators, uh, harboring sexual predators or, or, or money laundering criminals. But also, uh, there's this new thing called boosting. We have a boost in progress. <laughs> what the fuck does that I mean? I know what it means. I know what it means. I mean. But, but how do you do it? I don't know how to do it. It's I like mean, a channel look, dude, points thing, I think. They're getting rid of hosting. So they got to, they're, they're currently in the middle of a, uh, of a revamp here so you just give twitch some credit it's not like they're owned by like the biggest online retailer in the world <laughs> or anything so, like that so what boosting is is it puts you in the recommended so like all these little icons down here on the left uh mm -hmm. they are they're like recommended channels so if i if we get boosted we'll show up to more people over here in the little recommended so they'll see the little okay. little wolf icon but I don't As know how could. to do the boost. Like, how do you guys do a boost? I don't, it doesn't make any sense. And I saw on other people's, I was looking at other streamers. Here's Huskers. And yeah, boost in progress. Okay, let me boost him. I, it, I, there's, there's nothing. There's nothing. I, I, it doesn't make any sense. Whatever. Uh, anyway, uh, we should get into some news here. Yes. Uh, Again, we'll bury the lead a little bit because we want to talk briefly about new Sega Genesis games. Yes, because Nintendo does things their own way and doesn't wait till the end of the month or the beginning of the month to announce what free games you're getting if you're subscribed to their overpriced subscription service. Uh, they're telling you now we're getting three new games added to the Sega Genesis collection of Switch Online plus expansion pack. Um, so if you pay $50 a year, you get these three Sega Genesis games. Alicia Dragoon, Beyond Oasis and Earthworm Jim. Uh, Earthworm Jim, people were freaking out about. Uh, what's, so, what's what's the stance on Earthworm Jim? So we already have Earthworm Jim two in the Super Nintendo collection on Switch Online. I think the oh. big deal here is we're getting Earthworm Jim one 
in the Genesis collection because a lot of people feel that the Genesis version of Earthworm Jim is the better version. Now, are you saying that because you're a Genesis kid? No, no. You say that about Aladdin. I do. Well, Aladdin is a fact, but (laughs) I mean, look, I don't have enough. Earthworm Jim 1 on Genesis and Super Nintendo are fairly similar. I think the big things are, you know, graphic, graphically, they're a little bit different. Not much, uh, but the soundtrack is very different because Earthworm Jim with the Genesis sound chip sounds much more like dingy and, you know, metally and weird. And it fits like the aesthetic of Earthworm Jim more than like the more symphonic Super Nintendo soundtrack. So I think okay. that's why a lot of people are excited. I mean, I like it more because of the nostalgia yeah. Partly because of the soundtrack. I mean, it looks like it's the same exact game, but the music is so much more different. And yeah. Playing that on a Super Nintendo sound chip would would oh. I played audio. Playing it on a Super <laughs> Nintendo sound chip will would would not be great. Um yeah. anyway. Uh these other games look good too though. Beyond Oasis uh, looks pretty good. Beyond Alicia Oasis is... Dragoon looks like Castlevania. <laughs> a Beyond Oasis is uh Sega's answer to Zelda, like not not even trying to hide it. It was one of two games that they made that were trying to be Zelda. Uh, and for all accounts, it's not a bad game. So if you're if you're into the Zeldas, the links to the pastises, give this game a shot. And yeah, Alicia Dragoon, it's like a Castlevania E type game where you play as a lady with a lightning rod. <laughs> okay, interesting. That game's uh, good. That game's really good. Pretty good showing, I thought. Yeah. I would say. Uh, the uh, Sega Genesis games on Switch Online haven't had much good stuff recently, but uh, yeah, uh, I will note, uh, I believe Alicia Dragoon is on the Sega Genesis Classics collection that you can already buy on Switch for 30 bucks, and Beyond Oasis is also on that collection. So, once again, more <laughs> stuff from that collection that's already on Switch coming to Switch. I mean, I mean, yeah, I'd imagine most people here don't own that collection. Right. I already own that collection, so it's but a little. Redundant. I mean, how how many people have the expansion pack? Because that's how you get, can play these games. And what's more value to you? Thirty dollars up front, and that's it. Often on sale, or fifty dollars a year every year. That's a good point, Will. Let's do a that's... poll. What should the <laughs> poll be, though? Uh, well, it's you know, it's the golden eye question. Do you pay? Uh, fifty dollars a year every year to play Goldeneye, or do you just give Microsoft one, you know, one, uh, one transaction up front, and that's it? You have it. Okay, so I'm I'm gonna ask what they have. Yeah. Switch Online base subscription, Switch Online expansion pass. I buy retro games individually. Okay. Uh, or I don't buy retro games. Uh, I don't play retro games. Okay. Uh, and uh, what's the last one? I had another one in my head. Uh, Switch Online Base Sub, Switch Online Expansion Pass. I buy retro games individually. I buy ret- retro collections. Games retro- slash collections because they're two different things. It's compelling I, I, audio right here. Yeah, we're doing it for science, and it's going to be good, I promise. Yeah. All right. I buy retro collections. I don't play retro games. Uh, and there was a fifth one I wanted to do. Emulation? Because uh, KJ098 said emulation. <laughs> um, do I want to put emulation? I don't buy retro. I don't buy retro games. <laughs> yeah, buy in quotes. <laughs> I don't buy retro games because the whole point. Well, because what's the question here? The question is, uh, how do what, you prefer to pl- how, how do you prefer to obtain your retro games? Retro. That's on the question. Switch. How do you prefer to play yeah. retro on Switch? Yeah. Uh, Switch online base sub. Switch online. Ex- or how how do you play retro on Switch? How do you play retro on Switch? Yeah. Switch online base sub. Switch online expansion. I buy retro games slash collect. I 
I don't buy retro games. And uh, I guess that's it. Uh, right. We'll do a two-minute poll. There you go. Uh, interested to see how that's going to play out. So me, personally, what, what do I do? I guess I have the expansion pass, but I also... Yeah. Oh, I should have... The, the last one should have been everything. I do everything. Mm, yeah, because we do do everything. We do <laughs> do... Well, well... Do do. So, so I have the expansion pass, and I have uh, Sega Genesis games. Right. But I'd probably rather play them in the expansion pass, just because it's, mm-hmm. all, it's all there. So I guess that's where, I, that's where I'm at. I have the expansion pass, and I have whatever you understand if you had the well, do whatever you do the most that's what you put uh if you had the expansion pass but you play mostly like the Mega Man collection then then put i buy retro mm-hmm. okay so that's that what do we uh why don't we talk about some uh what do you call it grand theft auto so grand theft auto why don't we talk about that grand theft auto 6 possibly the most anticipated game in history um we know rockstar is making it we know like a little bit about it but we don't know enough to really know anything for sure um however on september 19th a user on the gta forums known teapot tuber hacker posted 90 videos from a test build of grand theft auto 6 running a gta 5 and 6 source code and assets uh screenshots and clips from these videos have gone around youtube twitter reddit and elsewhere and a lineup with details from another recent GTA 6 leak, as well as uh, an earlier one, both of which suggest that the upcoming open world game will have two protagonists, a man and a woman, and be set in and around the Miami-esque Vice City. The legitimacy of these videos has been confirmed by Rockstar. Uh, According to them, an unauthorized third party illegally accessed and downloaded confidential information from our systems, including early development footage for the next Grand Theft Auto. Uh, GTA publisher Take Two uh, has been using copyright rules to get the videos taken down from any mainstream website that hosts them. In one video, a player player character named Lucia robs a waffle restaurant with an accomplice named Jason taking hostages like they're in Pulp Fiction. A meter counts down uh, time until cops dispatched, and it looks reminiscent of the robberies in Red Dead Redemption 2. In spite of the mannequin NPCs clipping through objects, placeholder dialogue texts like Jason, uh, quote, parentheses, no, col- Jason colon generic curse to self, and a, cop's ca- and a cop car that's been recycled from GTA 5 only with VCPD written on it. So th- there's leaks on, uh, I've, su- I've seen the leaks on Twitter. Uh, mm-hmm. They're not here, but... Uh, there's no pictures, and we're not showing anything because uh, Rockstar is striking everything down really hard. Yeah, so I'm not even gonna, yeah. I'm not even gonna bother. It's gonna be a, a, yeah. a pain in the ass to to, to handle. Mm-hmm. Uh, in a poolside conversation between a male character and a couple of redneck associates, we hear some very GTA dialogue, such as "Oh yeah, he's dead, is he?" Just like there's a country called Finland. Uh, the notification saying what up message received during the sequence in a strip club suggests the parody of WhatsApp, another very rock star thing to do, as does setting the entire uh, scenes in a strip club complete with the detailed pole dancing. The previous GTA 6 leak claimed the game uh, has been in development since 2014 and was originally codenamed Project Americas. These files, which have the words Americas in their names, and some of which show a version running on the PlayStation 4 dev kit, may well be several years old. A source with knowledge of GTA 6's development told PC Gamer that the majority of videos would likely have been uh, attached to a bug report uh, from QA testers. The person apparently responsible for the GTA 6 leak uh, information has also claimed responsibility for hacking Uber. The FBI is investigating. Oh, God. So, uh, obviously, this is highly illegal. Yes. So, 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 we talk about leaks a lot on this show mm-hmm. and uh because we have to because it's news and this is a news related yeah. thing um it's this one is the most grimy looking one and i think it's uh been very interesting to see how everybody's reacting to it because the people yeah. 
you know, that we follow, the people who report on stuff like this have been really like, uh, they've been really like, not afraid to talk about it. They've just been like, uh, yeah. they've been calling out how it's like scummy it is. And that's weird to me to see that. It's weird to me to see news people reporting on news, reporting on it. And yeah. then being like, it's it sucks that I have to report on this because because it yeah. shouldn't have happened in the first place. Meanwhile, like I feel like anything else, like if this was fucking Nintendo, people would be over the moon to report about. Like if it was a new hardware from Nintendo, people would be f- all over it. Yeah, like the the Assassin's Creed Mirage got leaked. I think a few days before Ubisoft had that uh, you know online showcase that they did that was supposed yeah. to reveal it, and you know nobody was really saying like how gross it was that the new Assassin's Creed game got leaked. They just yeah, reported seen- on it. And then a few days later, Ubisoft, you know, presented it for, uh, for real this, for some reason, you know, I'm not saying he should have done it. Uh, whoever this person was, but we got this information now it's out in the open and yeah, there's a lot of media. That's like, Hey, fuck this guy. <laughs> I think, um, uh, in, in terms of Assassin's Creed, I did see people say like, I would have liked to have st- seen this in the reveal because people people right. like the reveal is like a big event they, they don't want a yeah. spoiler for that and, and that happens with nintendo directs people don't look at rumors because they don't want the spoilers of of the the, the event um yeah. in this case i think part of why people don't people aren't on board with it is because uh it really isn't the best look for the game and we know grand theft auto 6 is going to be great and we know it's going to be like this big massive like technical marvel of a game and we know it's heavily in development and they got a lot of work to do and stuff but uh the footage we've seen uh it looks very much like a game in development but the stage in development that it's in is is it looks like a it looks like almost like a finished game but there's a lot of things they need to iron out right no and i know that like game developers and publishers when they want to reveal a game they want it to look as good as possible and this is not that this is you know if the first shots of you know a marvel movie is just the green screen stuff yeah that we got so but it's it's also like if if we get a leak of what the wolverine movie's like and then the movie (laughs) comes out and it's exactly the fucking same as the development footage (laughs) uh let us know if you want the story of that because that that's a good story. <laughs> Tell the story. That's not a long story. So okay, so back in I think it was like 2007 is like before any of you were born. Uh, <laughs> in the chat of X Men Origins Wolverine was going to be the the fourth uh, X Men movie overall, the first solo one starring Wolverine. Uh, a work print version of that movie leaked online. Um, it was, the whole movie was done. But none of the special effects were in place, so or or they weren't like fit. There were some special effects, but there were some they that were in place and like yeah. some that weren't finished. There was a lot of green screen. You could tell what was finished because it was you know shot. It was shots from the trailer, so they finished I, the trailer stuff first. I would argue uh, it was hard to tell if things were finished. Right? No, it, Be, okay. there, most of the movie was like that. There was, I would say, there was like a scene or two. That was closer to done because those were scenes that were in the trailer. And and, and say. I'll say this happened like a week before the movie came out. This, this, it, this. it happened like a month or two before the movie came out. Okay. When that when the leak happened though, Fox was quick to say like this is just a work print. The uh, the movie's gonna look different. The movie is gonna you know be different. This isn't the final uh, story edit. We're still working on it. Movie comes out. The movie is exactly the same <laughs> except the special effects are now more filled in if, yeah if but th- they they were more filled in but they still looked rough that like yeah like you could see his wolverine's claws like jump around on his hands yeah. and stuff and, yeah it, and there was stuff where people were like this i'm sure this will look better in the finished product and then the finished product came out and you were like what the fuck and it did not look better at all <laughs> no uh it's hard to tell if we would have caught that stuff if we didn't have the work print but uh i mean some of the things you probably wouldn't be able to miss but yeah. other things yeah yeah, you're probably right. So, yeah, it's unfortunate to have something like this, especially Grand Theft Auto 6, which is going to obviously have a big reveal when they finally are ready to announce that they're working on it. Uh, yeah. That got ruined. And yeah, uh, 
it sucks because there's thousands of people working on this game and uh yeah. now their 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 work is th- their dirty <laughs> laundry has been aired out in front of everybody um which is kind of why people are reporting on this in such a very strange and weird way now there's also a lot of people who are saying it doesn't look good uh but again it's just a, it's a very early stages it's it's clearly yeah. not done like i saw a clip of uh like a diner robbery like like the main yeah. character was like robbing a diner or something and there was just like a lot of rough like ai stuff going on like uh uh she was being like yelled at by the cops but still able to rob every person and then like they were like clearly trying to break the ai um which i'm sure is something that uh is going to require a lot of work for them to to iron out yeah. otherwise uh it looks pretty far along in development so i'd imagine that they would have been close to a reveal any any minute but but then yeah, this, this sure. article says that it's uh it's probably an early build because it was a playstation 4 dev kit well they probably started developing it on playstation 4 right and then this is you know taken from that I'm sure PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5 dev kits are not that different from each other. I mean, yes, they're different, but, yeah. you know, the architecture is fairly similar, I would say. Yeah, um, I, I'd, I'd say, yeah, you're right. They've been working on it since PlayStation 4. They probably yeah. It probably still mostly works on a PlayStation 4, so they're just going yeah. along with it. Until they can't build on the PlayStation 4 stuff anymore, then they'll start switching everything over. Yeah, I'm also seeing a lot of like news reports saying that like this leak, uh, f- while it does like uh, does get this information out there, it ultimately doesn't change anything. This isn't gonna get the game out any faster. It's not gonna make Rockstar want to talk about the game any earlier. This right. is really just, you know, it, it was a reveal for no reason. Like this guy really didn't accomplish anything other than more people know that GTA six is in development and what it looks like at this stage of development. Right. Uh, yeah. And this is, yeah, this is a rumor we already knew about. We already knew they were working on yeah. GTA six and I'm pretty sure now it's confirmed that it's Miami, like a modern yeah. Miami or vice city. If you vice will. city, yeah. Mm-hmm. A modern version of vice city. Otherwise it looks, I mean, it looks good. It looks like a, it looks like, it looks I, like Grand Theft Auto. Yeah. I enjoyed Grand Theft Auto five. Uh, and yeah. I'm sure I would enjoy this. If you showed me this footage, I would have said this was Grand Theft Auto Online, just because of the yeah. I don't recognize the characters, but uh, it looks the it looks exactly the same to me. I you know I would imagine that uh, if the game's not going to be that different from Grand Theft Auto Five in a lot right. of respects, I mean yes, obviously it's going to be you know different setting, different UI, different uh, you know probably different controls to a certain respect. But the overall feel of it isn't going to be too dissimilar to what we saw in uh, GTA Five, right? Um, how do you feel now going forward about getting leaks from, like, if we hear something in the future, like about the Switch Two or or about the next Mario game? I mean, there's always like pros and cons to a leak on the one hand you know this information can come from anywhere a lot of the times it's just rumor and speculation that people latch on to and think that they and think is real mm-hmm. um sometimes you know when we talked about this the other day privately uh or was it privately hmm, i don't know we, um, we, did, Metroid we, Pro- we did talk about uh the direct last week and and, and no and pretty did we not talk well, about i'm talking about no, I'm talking about uh, f- I mentioned the Metroid Prime trilogy remaster or whatever oh, it was. Right, right. That's been a rumor for so long and that the story has changed so often. Right. At what point do we decide that maybe Nintendo isn't making a Metroid Prime uh remaster? Maybe we just made it up because well, we want it. That's the thing. Like like there's a lot of rumors like that about Nintendo mm-hmm. like like the last two weeks we were hearing about GameCube games and we were sure that that was going to happen. And then the yeah. direct hat comes and and that's not in the direct and everybody's disappointed. That's different though, because that's just the guy going, Hey, I have on good authority to know that there's going to be GameCube games in the next direct. What if that guy had a video 
of Metroid Prime running on a Switch, you know? Right. <laughs> that, that now that's a that's like a verifiable leak. Now is right. that is that like taboo now? I guess because like I there's a difference between saying something and showing something. Right. As it were, I could tell you that my Switch has a dead battery. Do you believe me? <laughs> I don't, actually. Well, here you go. Here's my Switch. I'm going to turn it on. And... Dead battery. I hope it turns... Oh, goddamn. I was going to say, I hope it turns on. <laughs> um, but that's... You see what I mean, right? That could have that could have worked. Yeah. But I, I guess, I guess uh, something that would be more similar would be uh here's metroid prime 4 and everything's right. like placeholder textures and stuff like that but and yeah, i wouldn't be so turned off by i like i would be stoked to see that but i guess because i'm i'm a fan of that yeah i mean i mean it, it's interesting no matter what it's going to be interesting you're going to get people's yeah. attention like people are going to want to know yeah you know I, get- I i don't Go ahead. I, I guess the difference is that I I can understand like this is development footage. I'm sure it'll be different later, and I can't wait to see the announcement because that's what I see when yeah. I see this Grand Theft Auto stuff. But I think that maybe Grand Theft Auto has more brain dead fans <laughs> because I saw a <laughs> lot of discourse on Twitter, people saying this looks like shit. Uh, this doesn't look any different than Grand Theft Auto Five, and and uh, yeah, uh, uh, I saw one guy that everybody was memeing on saying that. Uh, uh, the first thing to get finished in a game is the visuals, and then they tweak things after that. So that this game looks like shit be- for those reasons, which is obviously not how things work. Right. So maybe, I mean, I don't know. Maybe that's what it is. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I I guess also, too, a lot of people... I mean, this isn't just a Rockstar thing. This is AAA video games in general. They are very secretive about how games are made because yeah. they are very afraid that if you see a game... You know, early in development, you know, when it's you know, very rough and doesn't have any textures or anything, you're going to think it looks like crap and you're not going to want and they're afraid you're not going to want to buy the game when it comes out. You know, I th- honestly, I think if more developers weren't afraid to show work in progress of their games, more people wouldn't think that, you know, you're you know, you're people who watch this show and people who follow game games news regularly. No. That that's an early build. That's not what the game's gonna look like when it eventually comes out. Like all games start off rough. Um, but you know, your average person, you know, the people who make Grand Theft Auto Five sell twenty million copies in its first day, they're not gonna know that. They're gonna see that and go, "Man, this looks like crap." Yeah, exactly. They don't want you to show how the. They don't want you to see how the sausage is made. Because yeah. I and I like I understand that. Like if I'm in the back of a of a subway and I see how they're making the sandwiches, not how they're making the sandwiches, how they're cleaning stuff, I'd go, I never <laughs> want to eat Subway again, which is a true yeah. story about the first job I ever had working at a subway. <laughs> um so yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure we still got a ways to go till we uh see Grand Theft Auto Six until uh, we get it in our hands. Yeah. But this looked like enough to me to see a trailer sometime within the next year. Yeah. So, uh, that's something to be excited about, I would say. Especially because, like, all of their, their, like, entire Rockstar studios, like, all of them are working yeah, on this. Yeah, everyone right? is working on this. It's all hands yeah. on deck. And yeah. I really don't think this is going to affect sales of Grand Theft Auto 6 in any way. It's no. Grand Theft Auto 6. It's yeah. going to be the biggest seller game of all time. I mean, when Grand Theft Auto 5 came out, I, I was said to a kid once who thought that Grand Theft Auto 6 was going to come out within a year. I said, no, it'll probably come out when you're legally old enough to buy it and play it <laughs> without having to sneak it behind your parents. And now the kid is. So <laughs> there we go. <laughs> So, for reference, Grand Theft Auto V is the second best-selling game of all time. Yes. The first is Minecraft. And the third is Tetris. And then in parentheses, it says <laughs> EA. Uh, I think the EA version of Tetris, because EA owned like the distribution rights to Tetris for a long time, and I think all the EA versions of Tetris uh, account for that. 
Okay. And number 12 is the is the 1989 Tetris we all know and love. Yes. Yeah. Um, Grand Theft Auto V is constantly still in the top 10 best-selling games of every single month. So yeah. uh, th- th- there's no reason for them to make a six, really. They're still profiting off <laughs> of the their freaking eight-year-old game or whatever. Yeah. Uh, anyway, that's the news about leaks. Uh, Migs Luna, thanks for the 23 months. Razzle Jazzle, thank you for gifting a sub to Shadowbender. And Rope Dog, thank you for the four months. Um. Now, we'll talk about the big NVIDIA 40 series car. Oh, wait, we should probably view the results of this poll here. Yes. <laughs> Forgot about that. Uh, It's very close. It's pretty much split across the board. We have proved nothing. Huh. So the poll was, <laughs> how do you play retro on Switch? Do you, uh, I don't buy retro games, actually one. And buy is in quotes, so either don't play them or yeah. <laughs> you or you pirate them. And that one yeah. by only 28%. Um, the second highest was Switch Online Base Subscription. Uh, so if you play retro games like that, 26% did that. Uh, Switch Online Expansion Pass, 24%. And I buy retro games or, or collections, uh, 22%. Okay. I guess that could also be conf- the way I worded it. Could have also been confused for just buying like physical retro games. Yeah, which is fine. Um, so basically, we proved nothing. It's pretty much a <laughs> completely even split across the board on how people play their retro games on the Switch. Right. Uh. Anyway, now we will talk about the Nvidia 30 series stuff and why it's important. Oh, we probably should talk about the. Do we want to talk about the Diablo leaks really quick? Uh, Diablo 4 also leaked <laughs> uh, two videos uploaded anonymously to a file sharing website one containing five minutes of Diablo 4 footage and the other containing 38 minutes of footage it's unclear at what stage of development the footage is from but given the several models within the game world are untextured it is very it is clearly far from a finished product uh, okay uh, I, I, yeah. I've got I've got no interest in Diablo 4 I mean, Diablo 4 is another game that, like, you know, people are excited for. Uh, there hasn't been a lot of news about it. Um, it's also interesting because uh, it's coming from Blizzard, a currently embattled company for many reasons. Um, yeah, so there you so, go. It's leak season, folks. There was some news about it. Okay, so this game is coming to Windows, PlayStation 4, 5, Xbox One, and Series X and S. Yeah. Uh, Diablo 3 was on the Switch, but it was a special version i think i mean it was the game but like you know it came out later and they had to do a lot of work to it right uh and also diablo immortal was the thing they got announced first and it was the mobile yeah, game and everybody was pissy yeah. about it and you had like predatory microtransactions and stuff mm-hmm. which is unfortunate because i hear that the game's actually good it just yeah it everyone i've talked ruined. to who plays that game says it's very good it was just ruined by microtransactions yeah. all right now i'm going to talk about 30 se- the thir- the 40 series graphics cards and why they right. matter to you okay do it nerd uh nvidia announces next gen rtx 4090 and rtx 4080 gpus this is a huge deal because for years everybody's been going nuts over the 30 series cards you've always heard about 3080s yes. and 3090s yes. i even know what that is they're expensive and people have been using them to mine bitcoin and they've been expensive because of that bitcoin is cr- and and crypto has crashed and also Ethereum now announced that they don't, you can't mine it with GPUs anymore. Right. Uh, so graphics cards are affordable for, for gaming again. Uh, and with that, now NVIDIA announces they have new cards. Uh, NVIDIA is officially announcing the RTX 40 series. Also, consoles will follow what the newest graphics cards are doing eventually. So, like, mm-hmm. uh, all of the power you're going to get in these $1,500 graphics cards will eventually trickle down to consoles, you know, when they when they catch up. Uh, yeah. Consoles kind of caught up with 30 series stuff. Being able to play a yeah. game at 4K, 120 frames per second is insane with a little $500 device. is crazy. Uh, this should set a new standard. 
Uh, NVIDIA is officially announcing its RTX 40 series GPUs after months of rumors and some recent teasing from NVIDIA. The RTX 4090 and 4080 are now both official. The 4090 arrives in October, which is very soon. Uh, October 12th, it'll be priced at $1,599. Affordable. And, and the 4080, which is probably the one you should get if you're, if you're trying to get... Uh, if you want a new graphics card, you want it to be a monster. If you're fucking Uncle Pennybags, then get the 4090. But if you're just a guy, the 4080 will be more than enough. $899, and it'll be available in November. So that's half the price, or almost half the price. Almost half the price. Both are powered by NVIDIA's next-gen Ada Lovelace architecture. Okay. Okay. The 4090 is top-end card for the Ada Lovela Lovelace generation. All right. It will ship with a massive 24 gigabyte GDDR6 memory. NVIDIA claims it's two to four times faster than the RTX 3090 Ti, which is the current beefiest graphics card uh, right. uh, that's, like, commercially available. Uh I'm sure there's better than that, but it's the one that everybody gets. Uh, and it will consume the same amount of power as the previous generation card. That's crazy. NVIDIA recommends a power supply of at least 850 watts, which is also crazy, based on PC with a Ryzen 5 5900X processor. Inside the giant RTX 4090, it is very big, uh, are 16,384 CUDA cores. A uh, base clock of 2.23 gigahertz that boosts up to 2.52 gigahertz. Uh, all this other fucking nerd stuff. And, uh, oh, wait, what's, what are the, what are, there's all different types of teraflops? There's, yes, you, you didn't know, Mr. PC <laughs> Gamer. There's the tensor T flops, there's the RT T flops, the shader T flops. I did not know that. It's got over a thousand tensor T flops, teraflops. Uh, anyway, uh, Nvidia is actually offering the 4080 in two models. Great, more choice paralysis. One with 12 gigabytes of GDDR6X memory, and the other with 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory. And Nvidia claims it's two to four times faster than the existing RTX 3080 Ti, which is the one that like most people were trying to get. Uh, in the last generation the right. 12 gigabyte model will start at 899 and include 7680 cuda cores uh okay i'm not reading all that uh the 16 gigabyte model uh 4080 isn't just a bump in memory though price starting at 1199 dollars it's more powerful with 9000 cuda cores okay why would i get that one over the other one uh the model will require the, the the 12 gigabyte will require 700 watts of power the 16 gigabyte 750 watts of power which is still kind of beefy uh i think the freaking power supply at my in my home pc is only 650 um but I, that has a 1070 in it so i am now four generations behind <laughs> that's the one you're getting will you're welcome <laughs> it's all right i just need it to stream and i don't know play the sims <laughs> All three of these RTX 40 series cards will include an NVIDIA Shadow Play support to capture gameplay at up to 8K resolution at 60 frames per second in HDR. That is crazy. You don't need all that. NVIDIA Shadow Play is really cool. It basically allows you to do what you do on a console where you hit the share button and it just records the last 30 seconds. But on a computer, it does some cool things where like uh, in Call of Duty, for example, if you get a kill, it will just automatically record the kill. And it could do that if you get killed too, I think. Um, NVIDIA is also using its latest encoder, uh, NVIC, with support for AV1 encoding and improved efficiency for live streams using AV1. AV1 is what I, I was talking to Will about this before we started. Or, or, or at the beginning of this podcast, I was talking about it a little bit. So when we stream, either here yes. or at home, I use... NVENC encoding. It uses the graphics card. It makes the stream go very nice. It barely uses any system resources. So I can like even even on my 1070 at home, I can I can play a game like Valorant and stream it at the same time and it's like pretty it does a pretty good job. I can even right. play like freaking GameCube games emulated on my PC 
and stream at the same time because of the the NVENC support on on the graphics on the 1070 graphics card. Um, obviously, this has a 3060 Ti in it, which is the low end of the 30 series, and I can fucking do like anything with it. It's great. Um, the new shit is AV1 encoding which makes it so that if you're streaming, let's say on Twitch, where you only have about eight megabits of of data, like I said, streaming at 1080p, 60 frames per second, is, it doesn't look good at the low bit rate. Right. Streaming at, in this AV1 encoding, makes it so it will look good. So that's kind of a good reason to want to upgrade to a card like this. Uh, it's hard to show. It's going to be hard to show. Shut up. It's going to be hard to show <laughs> if you're, uh, especially if you're watching this on, on Twitch. But here's a video from NVIDIA uh, showing the difference between the two encoding methods. And this will be important for video editing and stuff too. Yeah. Uh, it does look a lot better. So at at just six megabits per second, uh, AV1 encoding instead of H.264 encoding looks it, it, you don't have this weird like bitrate artifacts and stuff. Mm -hmm. And this will also make it so that on on Twitch specifically, if you're a partner, you can get away with streaming at 1440p at only. 8 megabits per second, which is not something I would ever want to do in the current encoder that I have on my graphics card. Right. Uh, so this is something that got me a little excited about this series. However, I got a little bit, a little, I'll leak something here a little bit. <laughs> I'm, oh boy. I'm like 85.72% sure that I'm going to be getting an Intel Arc GPU, which is like, the, oh. it's Intel is entering the GPU market and they have like a budget like version. Uh, right. And that I'm pretty sure has the same sort of AV one support. Uh, so I'll be trying that out. Uh, I didn't know this was going to come out though. Now I got to like <laughs> test it against this. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, there's also, DLSS stuff, which we'll talk about. It wouldn't be a new RTX launch without NVIDIA's own Founder Edition graphics cards. I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. Uh, NVIDIA is supporting the PCIe Gen 5 16-pin connector with its own RTX 40 series cards instead of the cu custom solution it created for its own RTX 30 series Founder Edition GPUs. Like the previous connector... Okay, I don't care about the connector. Uh, okay, well... Ada Lovelace, named after the English mathematician and writer, is the. You, of did course. You know that? Did you know that? I've, obviously, obviously. Is the third generation of RTX that powers both the RTX 4080 and the RTX 3090. It's designed to greatly improve ray tracing and support deep learning super sampling DLSS 3, which is their new DLSS technology. So, DLSS is the thing that upscales games that are like in a low resolution or whatever dlss can use uh, uh artificial intelligence to make it look nicer which is the thing that everybody thought was going to be on the switch pro uh and it's still possible to be on the next switch if they yeah. if they want to do something to have low powered games look nicer on 4k tvs dlss might be a simple solution for that so they could still develop uh, for low resolution and have it look nice if they plug it into a dock or something. NVIDIA introduces third generation Ada Lovelace RTX uh, architecture with a Racer RTX demo. Uh, I'm sure it looks great. Uh, also includes third generation RT cores that are designed to greatly improve ray tracing. Part of the improvement come down to a new DLSS3 AI that processes the new frame and the prior frame to figure out how the game scenes are change are changing. NVIDIA demonstrated uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator frame rates more than doubling using DLSS 3. This new frame generation should mean DLSS 3 can boost frame rates even when a game is bottlenecked by a, G, uh, by a CPU. So if the CPU is shitty, uh, DLSS will make uh, it still look good, which is what we're talking about when we're saying using 
a, a DLSS on a Switch. Obviously, mm-hmm. the Switch doesn't have the hardware to do high frame rates and high resolution and stuff, but with DLSS, you can achieve that. Um, so it's possible this technology will eventually make it to consoles, especially if there's still stuff in development. NVIDIA says DLSS 3 is coming to more than 35 games and apps, starting with the first games in October. That's right at launch. We'll naturally need to put all of NVIDIA's claims to the test in the coming months as it launches the RTX 4090 and two models of the RTX 4080. The NVIDIA launch uh, of RTX 40 series cards comes at a challenging time for NVIDIA and the GPU market as a whole. GPU demand has been on has been really high and because of the crypto crash and, and everything we said earlier. Uh, I'd also like to add, though, that um, I this is a rumor, but I heard someone at NVIDIA had uh, uh, they made a statement saying that they're probably not going to lower the price of the 30 series GPUs, the previous uh, uh, hmm. GPUs. Uh, they're going to use those as more of like a budget option because they just can charge so much for these things because the economy is horrible right now. Uh, two paragraphs down. Although its, success, although its successor is now official, the previous RTX 30 series GPUs are likely to be available for some time to come Earlier this year, NVIDIA admitted it built too many GPUs and was forced to adjust retail pricing due to excess inventory. This resulted in uh, 30 series cards appearing at MSRP after years of price hikers by resellers, a welcome site for cash strapped PC gamers. That's good news. Yeah. So that also explains why they wouldn't want to. Well, I mean, they should. That, that should say that they would lower the price, but the guy said, like, we don't, we're not going to do that yeah but that but that makes sense why they would keep them available because they just have too darn many of them which is crazy because two years ago it was unheard of to go to the store and buy a 30 series graphics card right something else i think they're mentioning in this article um uh evga is a producer of nvidia graphics cards right you never well, if you've ever bought a graphics card before you know that there's so many different things like this article states Asus, colorful. I've never heard of them. Uh, yeah. Gigabyte, MSI, and there used to be EVGA. Yeah, EVGA uh, pulled out. They said we're not working with Nvidia anymore. Uh, fuck them. They had a bad relationship with yeah. Nvidia for some reason, uh, which is insane. Because what else does EVGA do? <laughs> and they <laughs> I mean, they said they're not. They, they said they're not laying anybody off, so they're gonna probably yeah. just shift what the company does. I mean, they did other. They're probably gonna handle like memory and motherboards and stuff. Yeah. Um, but I'd imagine that the release of this had something to do with it. Uh, Nvidia, they're in a position where they could ask a lot from manufacturers. Uh, the margins probably weren't worth it for them anymore. Yeah. Uh. Anyway, October twelfth, you'll be getting a forty ninety if you want one. And uh, sometime in November, a 4080, if you want that. Uh, so this is good news for PC people and also good news if you're uh, looking for new console hardware in the next couple of years because it'll have something to do with that. Uh, yeah. I'm still, I still want to make sure that I'm not wrong about the Intel Arc GPU uh, AV1. I'm pretty sure... So Epos Vox wrote an article for I think PC Gamer or something about uh uh Intel Arc AV. Oh, this is it. I just clicked it. I I googled it and it, uh, and it came right up. There you go. Uh, this First is Epos try. Vox right here. Uh it, it was for PC World. Intel Arc's AV1 encoding is the future of GPU streaming. So uh I read like half of this article. It is a lot of technical information. I will have to read the rest of it before I end up getting an Intel Arc GPU. Um, But this breaks down a lot about what makes AV1 so important. Uh, Like uh, Circa in the chat said, I think it was Circa in the chat. Uh, Yeah, if only AV1 was supported on more things. Yeah, it's unfortunate. It's not really, if like YouTube supported AV1, uh, actually, I think they're starting to. Anyway, I linked the article in the chat. It's it's a it's a good read if you're interested in this stuff. But uh, yeah, this is great news if if you just like video streaming too. 
but I'm curious to see how what this Intel Arc GPU was going to do with uh, like rendering video for like editing and stuff. Uh, Willow Davis says Bob loves complicating his life. That's true. It is very true, actually. What's our dad saying in the chat? Uh, oh boy, what isn't he saying in the chat? It says he's a founder at 32 months, but that's not true. <laughs> Did somebody give him that badge? Like 32 months is a long time to be a subscriber, and I appreciate it. Oh, that's you. Oh, hi. Yeah, I'm I'm a different kind of wolf den dad. You're not a founder. Fucking How am I not? <laughs> fucking uh, uh uh How am I not? Underscore is subscribed for 56 months. You're only subscribed for 32. Look, man, I don't, <laughs> I don't question the badge that I've been given. Okay? okay. All right. Anyway, Scott the Slaw, thanks for the eight months. Wolfpack, Wolfpack. Thanks, bro. Yeah, that's us. Uh, okay. So I hope you're still with us after all that NVIDIA talk. Yes. Because uh, now it's VR time. <laughs> oh, so much tech news in today's Wolf Den podcast. Yes. Uh, the PlayStation VR 2 isn't compatible with PSVR 1 games because fuck you. That's why mm -hmm. uh, when Sony Interactive Entertainment's PlayStation VR 2 headset is released in 2023, it won't be able to play games from the original PSVR, the company confirmed on Friday. PSVR games are not compatible with PSVR 2 because PSVR 2 is designed to deliver a truly next-gen VR experience. Uh, Hideki Nishino, Senior Vice President of Platform Experience at PlayStation, said in an interview with the official PlayStation podcast on Friday. Uh, Nishino went on to list what he describes as PSVR 2's more, much more advanced features compared to PSVR, such as inside-out tracking, eye tracking, H, uh, 4K HDR support, and new controller with haptic feedback and adaptive triggers. This means developing games for PSVR 2 requires a whole different approach than the original PSVR. Uh, in discussion of PSVR 2 so far, Sony has focused on games that are in development for the new hardware, such as No Man's Sky, uh, The Walking Dead Saints and Sinners Chapter 2, Resident Evil Village, Star Wars Tales from the Galaxy's Edge, and Horizon Call of the Mountain. So, so I understand why PlayStation VR 1 stuff wouldn't work with PlayStation VR 2 stuff. However... There's ways to, yeah. to make it work. Now, I'm saying feel... this as somebody who's never developed the game, and is, <laughs> those, those uh, even, even less about VR. But, but, I mean, the PS5 is a much, it's much more powerful hardware. I'm yeah. assuming PSVR 2 is going to be much more powerful hardware. The PS5 can emulate PS4 games, no problem. You know, I feel yeah. like Sony isn't making PSVR games playable on psvr2 because they are too lazy to yes uh, that's the nicest way i could put it they don't care enough exactly to do it, which okay. sucks because now so many people have 500 dollars worth a headset that's just useless to them or, or they just don't have a solution like 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 i understand it is I, I listened to the part on the podcast that talked about this mm -hmm. it is a completely different way of playing things um also i'm sure the controller is going to be a little different um there's it's it would take some time to adapt or to make it make the games work right. Um they should just do that. And uh yeah. if thing if there is a problem, they should do like what fucking Steam does and be like and give you a big warning right before you download the game or boot it up. Hey, yeah, this was adapted automatically. Things might be weird. Yeah. So are you okay? Are you okay? You want to play it? You cool? Like, you cool, yeah. bro? Like, if I bought the game on PlayStation 4 for VR, let me fucking use the game. Like, even if it's going to be yeah. a little shittier. Like, let me just have a warning that says that it's going to be a little shittier. And also, too, like, a lot of those features, like eye tracking and inside-out cameras, like, yeah, PSVR 1 games don't use them, so just deactivate them. Yeah, or, or adapt games. it. As best you yeah. can, ha have something, ha have something that just adapts it. That can't be that hard to do. And if it, and if it's gonna break some things, have a warning like Steam does on the Steam Deck. Yeah. Hey, this game's gonna have small text. Are you okay? <laughs> but there's there's nothing. 
There's nothing wrong with that. Metacenter says, yeah. a little shittier in VR means people puke, and they don't want that to be the story of the headset. That's why a big fat yeah. warning would be important. And I got to be honest with you, PSVR 1 already wanted to puke. Uh, yeah. So I PSVR 1 kind of uh, shaped my vision of VR. Uh, PSVR 1 was just the most accessible, and it was really cool, but... A lot of games made me not want to play them because they made me want to throw up. Uh, right. And I hear from Wood that that is a resolution thing and a frame rate thing. If it's higher frame rate and higher resolution, uh, m- for the most part, unless there's other shit that's complicating things, like if you're just like, you know, uh, if the motion is just insane, then that doesn't right. think you can really do about that. But... Uh, Having a good frame rate and a good resolution will uh, put at ease your your motion sickness a little bit. Mm-hmm. So, um, uh, have we talked about how great Bob's hair is looking today? Well, thanks. <laughs> yeah, I put a I put a little light, a little hair light on it while Will was reading the Grand Theft Auto. I know. I, I saw you. I saw you get up and get it. And by the time I realized that, I don't want to talk shit about you. It was too late. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I, I understand technically why they're not having PlayStation VR one games compatible with PSVR two. I think, uh, it's a, it's a bullshit reason. I, th- I, I yeah. think, I think PlayStation is just bad at backwards compatibility and, uh, they just don't want to put the effort in. Yeah. Okay uh what's next golden eye remember that <laughs> yeah it's coming back but it might not be coming back in the way you think it's coming back uh golden eye is finally returning to consoles but the good news has been quickly overshadowed thanks to its upcoming launch being anything but simple there are two versions of the re-release with different versions for the switch and the xbox and neither of them are the much anticipated remaster that leaked last year it's a weirdly convoluted situation as part of the recent nintendo direct the n64 classic shooter goldeneye was announced for switch online as with the other games in the online collection this is an emulated version of the n64 original not a remake or a remaster it does however have one new feature online multiplayer at pretty much the same time rare the microsoft owned studio that created the original goldeneye announced on twitter that gold that a GoldenEye re-release will also be coming to Xbox via Game Pass and made available free to owners of the Rare Replay collection. However, the studio's description of the game made it instantly clear that the Switch and Xbox versions were not the same. The Xbox version includes achievements, 4K resolution, and a smoother frame rate, and even split-screen local multiplayer. No mention was made of online multiplayer. Later, the official Bond website uh, 007.com confirmed that online multiplayer was exclusive to the Switch. It also noted that the Xbox version is different from the Switch release, calling it a 4K remaster rather than a re-release. So this all we already knew. We talked about this last week. However, this remaster of GoldenEye is not the remaster that has been pretty much an open secret amongst uh, the game industry for years. During the 360 era, Rare created a fully remastered of uh, a full remaster of GoldenEye with updated graphics and a function that allowed players to instantly switch between the original and updated visuals, much like the Halo 1 and 2 remasters. This version eventually leaked onto the internet in 2021. Following the leak, members of the development team revealed that the work on GoldenEye remaster had pretty much finished and the game was all but ready to be released. But Nintendo stepped in and canceled it. Allegedly, Nintendo did not like the idea of an N64 game releasing on a Microsoft console. Over the past year, a number of leaks revealed um, Xbox achievements for GoldenEye. This may have given some people hope that Rare's full remaster was finally on the way. News of the game being in limbo due to the Ukraine war would have only fueled that hope. But instead, the version that was released is just a high-def version of the original N64 game. You're getting some. You're getting the same '90s graphics, just cleaned up. The updated visuals uh, remaster, it seems, is hopefully it, uh, for Rare's eyes only. Sorry, officially for Rare's eyes only. So that legendary GoldenEye remaster that leaked last year, 
the only way you can play that is if you download the ROM of it from like Pirate Bay or something. What we're getting is this is the original game just up rest. Can we pirate it? Up. Is that a thing? Is yeah. it out? Is it piratable? <laughs> I want to play it. Yes, yeah, it's, it's been available since last year. There's a lot of playthroughs of it. It's more or less the full game. It's it's basically what they did with the Perfect Dark remaster, where they completely changed the visuals and like not just up up it, but completely changed the, the character models and art style. Um, whereas this version that's that we're officially getting isn't that. <laughs> Does IGN have a have an article about it? I mean, have a does IGN have a video? It might. IGN has a video. Oh, I remember this. I remember this. Yeah. This doesn't look good. <laughs> this looks like <laughs> this just looks like a, yeah. No, this. Well, again, this was a leak. I think comparing that. Yeah, it's a good point. It is a leak. Yeah. So, but they said it was basically finished. Yeah. I I think comparing this to the Halo remaster is a little ridiculous. Well, it, compare it because you can switch back and forth between uh, the original graphic style and this new graphic style, like the Halo remaster. Can. Okay. Okay. I mean, That's yeah, what but the new graphic about. style isn't like that. They kind of just have lighting and textures. The textures are nicer. The textures are nicer. Right. And the lighting is nicer. The polygons are still polygons, you know? <laughs> uh, but. Interesting. So, so it, I mean. Why would Nintendo say no to this, but okay to Rare Replay? That's what I, that's what, you know, I think a lot of people, a lot of people are quick to blame Nintendo. But yeah, on and the what authority do they have to do that on, also? You have to remember, on the 360, we got Banjo-Kazooie, yeah. Banjo-Tooie, Perfect Dark. We got three Nintendo 64 games released on the Xbox 360. Why? Why was Goldeneye the outlier? Yeah. It can't just be because of Nintendo. It has to do... I I firmly believe it has to do with the James Bond license. Right. Because that's the only outlier. It's the only thing that separates Goldeneye from all the other games. But but something has to... So, so I agree. Uh... I agree that's probably why it's in rare replay and not a standalone thing. Right. But cuz I that's uh, that also really confusing though because I I believe that Nintendo if anybody's going to get the license to work it's Nintendo. They're going to figure that shit out. Um mm-hmm. and then them doing that probably figured some shit out for rare also. Yeah. Why then was the multiplayer exclusive to the switch version that has to be a nintendo thing yeah and and why wasn't okay you know what this is making a lot more sense now that you put it into perspective (laughs) the xbox version with the updated graphics and whatever probably a licensing issue nintendo was like we got n64 games we gotta get goldeneye working they figured out the license stuff and then they're like hey rare we figured out the licensing stuff we'll throw you a bone and then they're like cool uh we're gonna have 4k and they're like all right but that's fine no multiplayer but we get we get online multiplayer yeah and rare's like all right well you figured out the licensing thing so i guess yeah. fine we're, we'll we'll that's, do that yeah that's probably what happened that makes a lot more sense yeah we figured it out see we're sleuths yeah. here yeah we are we are detectives we're leaking channel. what uh happened behind the scenes <laughs> about the golden eye uh stuff yeah anyway uh, that's unfortunate because uh, that this version looked better, and uh, I would have loved to have played multiplayer that way. Yeah, <laughs> and I believe the Xbox version is going to have updated control schemes, like true true dual analog control scheme, like a oh, modern yeah. first person shooter. Whereas Switch Online is going to have its weird N sixty four button remapping. That everybody loves so much. I'm curious because there's potential there for Nintendo to... Because Nintendo changes the button mapping per game. It's mostly the right. same, but there's some games like Sin and Punishment that does a weird thing. It's potential mm-hmm. that GoldenEye could do a weird thing. They can't really flip 
control. Well, they. I don't know how they would go about flipping around the C stick and the control stick because yeah. that's the problem with GoldenEye is that the 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 X axis and is like is is is. The X axis on the it's, right stick and left stick is is back is 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 yes. put in the wrong spot. It's on the wrong stick, yeah. basically. Um, it makes it makes the game fucking weird. But you know what? I have I've been fine playing it on a Retroid Pocket Three. Play, playing Perfect Dark right. it's been totally. Yeah. My brain has adapted to it. The only uh, another big thing that helps is uh, having two shoot buttons because you have uh, instead of just having Z. You have R two yeah. and L two, and if they're both shoot, it kind of kind of helps. Um, yeah, but uh, yeah, they could do something weird and wacky with the with the control yeah. configuration. Um. Anyway, uh, let's talk more about retro stuff. Yes, the analog pocket can now play Super Nintendo games. No jailbreaking or complicated hardware hacks required. Uh, expandability is one of the best promised features of the analog pocket when it was uh, announced back in 2020, 2019 with an extra FPGA that developers could use to transform the handheld into other consoles, which now includes the Super Nintendo through some very easy updates. Analog Pocket's other clever trick is the ability to accommodate original game cartridges from classic hardware like the G- Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, uh, or others like the Game Gear through cartridge adapters. That approach appeals to gamers that want access to older save games, but carrying around a handful of game cards feels antiquated at this point. Uh, and there's no real way uh, cartridges from consoles like the SNES would ever be com- uh, comfortably slot into the analog pocket. The handheld's new unofficial SNES core solves that. Uh, Russ Crandall, who runs the <laughs> Retro Game Core YouTube channel and website, and also happens to be a New York Times bestselling cookbook author, this is true. <laughs> and also... Featured on the Wolf Den podcast. Oh, yeah, that's right. (laughs) Uh, Recently shared a video of the Analog Pocket playing SNES games. And while all the handhelds handhelds features aren't available while playing these classic 16-bit titles, uh, the gameplay looks nearly flawless and there's no physical cartridge needed. Uh, you'll want to head over to Crandall's Retro Game Core website where there's a page dedicated to adding support for other consoles to the analog pocket. Um, the first step is to make sure your pocket is updated to firmware 1.1 or newer, um, which will give you which will give your unit open FPGA capabilities. From there, it's as easy as downloading the Mr. Super Nintendo Core, uh, which has been ported to Pocket by developer AG23, and then copying a bunch of files to the handheld's micro SD card. Uh, the tutorial will walk you through all the steps in detail, including instructions on where you need to copy ROM game files in- onto the SD card. Uh, these are not provided by Analog nor by this developer. Sourcing those are up to you. By default, games run slightly stretched in the SNES's native 8 eight by 7 aspect ratio, but switching to 4x3 uh, aspect ratio you most likely use as a kid is as easy as text editing a single file uh, from From our own testing, gameplay is incredibly solid, and SNES games look beautiful on the screen. uh, But you don't have to access the handhelds. You don't have access to the handhelds' fancy screen filters that can simulate the appearance of retro hardware. Nor can you take advantage of instantaneous save states. Um, Saving in-game works just fine. The pocket also can't be temporarily put to sleep while playing SNES titles. So, uh, first of all, I'd like to mention that. uh... Russ from Retro Game Four is not happy that they used his full name. <laughs> uh, this article references my Analog Pocket of- Open FPGA guide, and they also did some digging and found my full name and cookbooks. <laughs> uh, there was more that he said. Uh, he said something along the lines of it reminds him of the military, how everybody referred to him as his last name. Uh, oh. So it's not that he's not happy. He just thought it was very bizarre that they did that. Um, right. And I agree. It is pretty bizarre. Um, yeah, because usually they just refer to you by your handle. Yeah. Like Retro Game Core has a video on this. Yeah. But Russ Crandall, who runs Retro Game Core YouTube channel and website, and also he's a YouTube, he's a, he's a best-selling cookbook author. <laughs> And also, he's a friend of the channel. <laughs> and also, he's a friend of the channel. And has been on the Wolf Den podcast before. Yes. Um, 
very weird. But I guess, I mean, it's kind of cool to be referred to. I would like to be referred to as Bob Wolf from Wolf Den. I don't like, I, I don't like it when they say, when they call me Wolf Den. Or I didn't like right. it, especially when you were on the channel, when they called me Wolf Den. But yeah. uh, now that you're not a, a main feature on the channel, have, I really, have at it. I don't really care if they call me Wolf Den. Um, anyway, uh, this is really cool. I'm very curious why SNES and not NES. Ah, uh, I don't know. That's a good, qu that why is a good we, question. Why do we completely skip NES? Um, Maybe people just like the SNES generation more. <laughs> so I, I, I do like it more. Uh, I yeah. haven't done this yet. I'd imagine it's very easy because I've done it for the other cores. Uh, I have mm -hmm. a video on the other cores and how to do it and how it is and whatever. Um, watch that video if you haven't. It will explain basically everything here too. It's the same mm -hmm. shit. Just add SNES on top of that. Uh, I haven't done it yet. I will do it. I am not going to make a video on it because I want to wait for more cores and more stuff to talk about. Because the video would literally just be, hey, there's Super Nintendo cores. Now move a file. Here it is. And now you can play Super Nintendo. So I do have a video this week about the MiU Mini. So... There's some stay tuned for that <laughs> emulation for you. Uh, so yeah, this is very good news. Uh, also good news that the Mister Core was used because we could just use Mister Cores for other shit, probably. Yes. Anyway, uh, have you even done any of the Open FPGA stuff on your analog pocket? Yeah, I did the, I did the Game Boy emulator you sent. Ah, okay. Yeah, works well. I just, I forget like sometimes how to access it because it's like you have to go into open FPGA first. Right. Like it's not just there. Yeah. So what well, you have all of them, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, this would just be as easy as adding those files. Yeah. And that's pretty much it. Uh, anyway, Sonic Frontier. Sonic Frontier. Sonic it reportedly runs like uh, absolute dog shit on Switch. Throw <laughs> the game out. Never buying it. Uh, it was Tokyo Game Show last week, and Sonic Frontiers was a major presence there. Not only was there a brand new trailer uh, confirming the return of Super Sonic, but waiting lines at the demo booth were so long that Sega was forced to shut it down. Whoa. Damn. Uh, Twitter user Tadanohi, uh an attendee who was lucky enough to experience the demo asked Sega representatives about the resolution and frame rate uh, of Sonic Frontiers, and they received a solid answer. The game is reportedly targeting 720p 30 frames a second on Switch, 1080p 30 frames on PS4, uh, and 4K 30 or 1080 60 on the PlayStation 5. While this it hasn't been officially confirmed, these are definitely some believable numbers. That's very weird. Uh, yeah, I was making a joke when I said it runs like absolute dog shit. Yeah. I think that that's probably fine. That makes sense. The screen's only 720p on a Switch. So yeah, running at 720p makes sense. 30 frames per second kind of sucks. Uh, yeah. But 30 well, frames per second on PlayStation 4? What? That's surprising. That's that weird. Tell, that tells me that uh, they're having trouble optimizing it for full 60 frames yes. a second, not just on Switch, but in general. So, I mean, look, if they got to bump this down to 30 to get it playable and like good, that's fine. You know, I don't want them trying to hit 60 and it just become an unplayable mess like Sonic Team Games are one to do from past experience. Well, well, yeah, I'm fine with it, too. But I think it's a bad sign coming from them because they've had bad a bad track record. So seeing right. specs like this are concerning to me like if any other developer uh said that their game is going to run 720 30 i'd be like okay they want it to run stably that makes sense these guys yeah. doing that i'm like they want it to run stably something's wrong <laughs> <laughs> um 4k 30 and 1080p 60 on playstation 5 uh it's weird that's weird if you want to play this game what... at 60 frames per second you gotta play it on playstation 5 that's weird I mean, isn't that what uh, Spider-Man Miles Morales does? 1080p 60 and 4K 30, depending on what version you have it in? Uh, like yes. Performance mode or regular mode? Yes. So, 
I mean, it's not unheard of for games to do this. But this doesn't but again, look like Spider-Man Miles Morales, does it? Right. I was going to say, again, this is a Sonic Team game. Yeah, this looks like a freaking Unreal Tech demo. God, Unreal Engine there is, 3 Tech demo. There is so much unfair weight on this game. You know, like, if this was, like, any other game, like, it'd be okay, whatever. But the fact that this is a Sonic game and this is Sonic Team trying to do something radically different with mm -hmm. Sonic, like, there's just... I just feel like no matter what happens, people are going to be on... People are not going to like this game. People are going to be unfair to this game. Which sucks because I think that their heart's in the right place and they have the right idea to do something new and interesting with Sonic. But... You know, history has a way of repeating itself. And those who do not learn from history are doomed to repeat it, as we've seen many times from this same fucking developer. Here's a video of Unreal Engine 3. <laughs> <laughs> this does look kind of shitty. This does look kind of yeah. shitty, though. Oh, it's like some guy made this. What's this one? NVIDIA shows off impressive turf. This is from 2014. Okay, that is that turf does look nice. That turf does look nice. Yeah, this is 2014. We're looking at. You couldn't put a sky in. Come on, you're not, not <laughs> doing a good job proving my point. Hey, man, that turf though. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I'm very skeptical of this game. That the the trailers they showed looked pretty good. The last trailer, um, they mentioned it's at to it was at Tokyo Game Show with the new trailer. It was also in the Nintendo Direct, but in Japan. Right. Uh, so Japan is going hard with Sonic Frontiers. Uh, I don't know. I'm I'm gonna play it. It's out November eighth. Yeah. I just I don't know what the hell I'm gonna get it for. I guess I'll get it on Switch, but uh, I I'm, yeah, I I'm gonna, suspect nah, it's gonna be the worst version. I'm gonna get it on PS4 or three or Xbox. I'm there's no way I'm gonna play this on Switch because uh, I, what I've seen from uh, Colors and Frontier, the Switch was the worst version of those right. games, and I don't I mean, think Sonic Team has figured out a way to develop 3d sonic games for switch maybe i'll have to get it for pc I, yeah. i'm i'm having a little uh crisis getting things for pc because like uh i, I like to collect things you know and yeah. like for switch i just keep it all on a giant micro sd card for yeah. pc i'm not gonna get a giant gaming hard drive to put everything you know i'm right. gonna have to have like a backup drive that just has all my games on it that i don't yeah. like that um, I'm just gonna have to hope Steam never goes under. <laughs> um, anyway, let's read some notifications. We got Anima PS5 for the four months. Thank you very much. And we have Ethel Thank with you. 37 months. How am I beating Will in months subscribed? Explain yourself. You know, I I probably forget to resubscribe <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> you know, I, no, I, you know, I think 37 months ago or or 34 months ago or however long your thing is. You just didn't know about Prime subscriptions. Probably. It's one of those. It's definitely one of those things where like, it's so stupid that it doesn't just automatically resubscribe yeah, you. It is stupid. It really is. It's like they should fix that <laughs> of anything that they're going to fix. I, I I think it's because uh, you could easily forget that you're using that Prime subscription. And oh, also, yeah, absolutely. They're just then you just be wasting three of their dollars every month. Yeah. Um, so again, if you have Amazon prime, you can link it to your Twitch account and you can, you could do a little subby, uh, for free. Uh, anyway, the Xbox app for PC now has how long to beat built in, which is great news. Yes. I use how long to beat all the time. Microsoft has released a new version of the Xbox app on PC. The September update adds how long to beat integration. If you're not familiar with the website, why? Uh, it's a resource where you can find out how long, how much time you may need to complete a specific game. Uh, what makes how long to beat so helpful is that it uses sep it has separate estimates for players with different play styles. Using Red Dead Redemption 2 as an example, how long to beat estimates most people will need about 50 hours to complete the main story and another 30 hours or so uh, to play through the game's side content. If you want to see everything the game has to offer, it will take about 174 hours. 
Uh, Microsoft suggests the integration will make it easier to decide what games you want to play next since you'll have a better idea of time commitment it wants from you. The company also notes that you can cl click view details to submit your own play times and help other players decide how to spend their time. Uh, even if you don't end up using the how long to beat integration much, uh, the September update will help you save time. According to Microsoft, the Xbox app now has 15% faster at launching. Additionally, there should be significantly fewer instances of crashes and games failing to download or in install successfully. Um, lastly, the search functionality should produce results about 20% faster. Uh, I literally, as you're reading that, downloaded the Xbox app. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Let's see here. Deathloop. Uh, which I, which I guess we'll, for that. we'll talk about. Yeah. <laughs> um, open. Oh, here it is. Uh... Where's the how long to beat? Oh my god, it just has install. Okay, well I'll, we'll get okay. into that in a second. Um, performance check not available yet. Maybe the how long to beat isn't available for the Xbox version. All right, Assassin's Creed Odyssey. It's, yeah, I was gonna say it's the same game. <laughs> Is there like a more details view you can look at? Full details. Full detail. There you go. There you go. Right oh, there. Oh, right there, dude. Huge, huge feature yeah. on how long to beat. That's great. I think how long to beat is an uh, incredible resource. I use yeah, it it's a fantastic time. website. Um, I'm surprised. I kind of wish, I mean, I'm not surprised, but like I do wish this was integrated in like Xbox overall, not just the PC app. Yeah. Like, I don't see why they can't do this on the Xbox console or like on their website. Although I, by then you should just go to how long to beat. I for sure think this is just uh the start of it i think this will yeah for sure start to roll out into other stuff yeah. which i think also thinks this is interesting because they could have implemented their own they could have yeah they could have just put you know like they got to know what the achievement is for finishing each game and they yeah. could have easily just put this is how this is the average length people uh play the game for yeah uh instead they're partnering with how long to beat did they buy did how long to Beat get bought they are owned by Ziff Davis, who also owns IGN. Interesting. Okay. Uh, yeah, I go to How Long to Be basically every time I want to play a game that's not like a, a, a dire uh, a, a topic for my job. Like if I'm yeah. going to play a game and, and it's like a single player game, uh, I go to How Long to Be to see how much of a commitment it is. And if it's too long, yeah. I just don't play the game. Uh, I use it for everything. Uh, it's fucking awesome. So, so yeah, I hope it makes it onto more storefronts because I would love to, yeah, be able to gauge whether or not it's worth my time. Or even if like if how long to beat specifically isn't on more storefronts and like something equivalent yeah. to it. Like, there's no reason why Sony can't have its own version of that or Nintendo have. I think it's yeah, you know, especially in this day and age when yeah, what's the average amount of time people play the game for yeah. until they beat it? You know, time is so valuable to people now, and there's every there's content every which way trying to get your eyes and ears. You know, people want to know this stuff. Right? Movies have runtime. Uh, I noticed uh, when I downloaded this uh, Xbox app that Deathloop is on here, and I can download it and play it right now. Yes, that is because Deathloop has arrived on Game Pass, ladies and gentlemen. The Whoa. critically acclaimed. Uh, death loop in the critically acclaimed death loop two rival assassins are trapped in a mysterious time loop on the island of black reef as cult the only chance for escape is to end the cycle by assassinating eight key targets before the day resets learn from each cycle try new approaches and do whatever it takes to break the time loop uh enjoy a slew of features like photo mode accessibility and the golden loop update with a new weapon and ability cross play matchmaking an extended ending and more Put the end to eternity today on Xbox One consoles with cloud gaming. So, wait, what? Plus, you can play ground and floor release. Blah blah. Jump into these games. I don't know. Dang and Rampa Three is coming. Uh, yes, yes. <laughs> that was not in the top. That's that's sounds well, like no, good news. Uh, dang, it's. They're adding touch controls. 
Oh, the okay. That's what it is. oh, Xbox Tusk is coming in nine more games. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. Uh, okay. What is Moon Scars? I feel like that I should know what that is. Moon Scars. Uh, unravel the mystery of your existence in this challenging yet rewarding Souls like 2D platformer slasher. As a fierce Claiborne uh, warrior, Gray Irma. Uh, you must push your combat skills to the limit and master new abilities to progress through this stunning yet unforgiving world facing off against relentless enemies and cruel and the cruel mistress of the moon. Uh, you will, un- you will discover your past and finally find the peace you so desperately desire. Uh, this looks cool. This is uh the animations look very beautiful. Yeah. I, I, I think I went through like a phase where I looked through all types of like 2d souls like games. And uh-huh. uh, this, I, I might have come across this, and that's how I recognized it. Uh, looks pretty good, mm-hmm. and that will be coming to Game Pass apparently. Yes. Uh, so yeah, and Microsoft announced games that are coming to Game Pass via cloud or console or PC. The big news, of course, is Deathloop because that was a PS5 exclusive, and then Microsoft bought Bethesda, and everyone's like, "What does this mean for Deathloop?" Because that's made by Bethesda. And then one year after Deathloop came out, Microsoft's just like, hey, it's on Xbox now, and it's in Game Pass day one. Boom! So, so, yeah, has it been a year? It's been about a year, yeah. That makes sense. So the exclusivity is over. Now, Deathloop is also part of uh, PlayStation Plus Premium. So regardless of what you're subscribed to, you can play Deathloop right now. (laughs) That's it. I wonder how long that will last. Yeah. Um. Uh, okay. Cool. So, if you've been interested in Death Loop, now's your chance. I thought it was pretty good. Uh, I, I people went. People called it like the best game of last year, and I just did not. Yeah, did people not went agree. nuts for that game. Yeah, it was good. I think one of the coolest parts is that people can like take over your game and like hunt you down and stuff. Yeah. Um, otherwise, I think it's okay. It was just okay. <laughs> um, I think the best moment for me was that I was streaming it, and Jackson got into my game and was hunting me. <laughs> That's like, cool. stre- he stream sniped me, but that's like a unique experience. You know what I think the thing is? Like Death Loop, time loops were becoming like a big like trend in indie games for a long time. Mm-hmm. And Death Loop was the first like triple A game to like really make it its central gameplay mechanic. So I think a lot of like the gaming press latched onto that, like mm-hmm. lifted it up as like the exemplar of time loop games. So the time loop is a very easy way to make sense of a roguelike. Yeah. Um, Super Time Force, very good indie game that uh, but that wasn't really like a. That more so played with time as like a game mechanic. Yeah. Uh, kind of like a Prince of Persia type deal. Yeah. Anyway, uh, Resident Evil Four. What the hell's going on here? Is the remake well, is launching on PS4? First of all, yes. why? Second of all, <laughs> but not Xbox One. Uh, the new Resident Evil 4 remake out next year is in development for PS4. We knew it was coming to next-gen machines, but now it is headed to Sony's older home console. However, it seems to be skipping the Xbox One, possibly due to a lack of power or sales. In June of this year, during the Sony State of Play, a Resident Evil 4 remake was revealed, confirming the years of rumor and speculation that is indeed a real thing. Um, the game isn't a remastering of the classic horror title, even though it probably should just be that but rather a complete remake in the vein of 2019's Resident Evil 2 or 2020's Resident Evil 3. Like those games, it's being rebuilt from the ground up and Capcom's RE engine, the same engine that also powers recent games like Resident Evil Village and Resident Evil 7. Uh, At the time of the reveal, it appeared this new remake would be a next-gen only thing. Well, that's not the case anymore. Announced today during Capcom's Tokyo Game Show 2022 online showcase, RE4 remake is now coming to PS4, uh, no trailer or footage of this version was shown, but it does confirm that this next entry in the series is now a cross-gen game. However, Xbox One owners hoping to play uh, RE4 Remake are now out of luck. Nowhere in the showcase today did Capcom mention an Xbox One port of the remake. In fact, when Capcom showed off the game's title art, it only showed logos for PS5, PS4, Xbox Series X and S, and PC. So I'd, uh, I'd imagine that's a low sales thing. 
That's what it sounds like. So, so, so to be clear, it is coming to PS5 and Xbox Series X, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. This article coming, did not yeah. make that clear. It's the article says it right, right here in black and white. When when Capcom showed off the game's arts uh, title art, it only showed logos for PS5, PS4, Xbox Series X, and S, and PC. Yeah, but look at the title. They, they did that on purpose. <laughs> Well, everybody, like, when they announced it, it was announced as a next-gen game. And now, all of a sudden, uh-huh. it's coming to so, PS4. Everybody knew it was going to be a next-gen game already. Uh, uh, hold on. Everybody oh, yeah, everybody who cared about it knew. <laughs> now, this is a new article. You have to... You've, they fucking said that on purpose. They made it look like it was a big deal that it's not coming to Xbox at all. It was a clickbait situation. It specifically says Xbox One. There are... Two, technically three Xbox consoles out on the market right now. I'm calling clickbait. <laughs> okay. Everything's clickbait. We title our podcast clickbait titles for what did I ti- what did I title it today? Uh, why, why is it crazy, so about crazy? It? Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh so yeah, there are two possible reasons why it's not coming to Xbox. One, the Xbox never sold as well as the PS4, particularly in Japan. Um Two, uh, the base Xbox One is too underpowered for what Capcom devs are trying to do with this remake. Because let's not forget the big black VCR style Xbox One that a lot of people had. I had one uh, is very weak compared to even an Xbox uh, One S model. So it's very possible that they couldn't achieve, you know, consistent gameplay parity across all versions of the Xbox One. Um, but that said, it's the RE engine. It's what all the Resident Evil games are made in now. I don't mm-hmm. see how it c- it couldn't have scaled down to an Xbox One in some capacity. Um, especially with you know Microsoft's great use of smart delivery and backwards compatibility. Uh, uh-huh. It does stink, but I guess at some point you gotta cut your losses. I think uh, it's just low sales for the most part and and maybe it would take a little bit of effort and they just decided uh it's not worth it for them um it's probably gonna take effort for them to get it to work on a ps4 on 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 last gen at all anyway so Mm -hmm. they just want to put the extra effort to make it work on something that's probably not going to sell too much on uh here in america it would probably do like okay on xbox one um I mean, Xbox One had pretty low sales here in America, too. Yeah. But uh, this is a Japanese game, and in Japan, fucking nobody bought an Xbox One. So uh, it makes a, I think that makes a lot of sense why they wouldn't want it on there. Anyway. Uh, Gran Turismo movie. All right. So real quick, all I really want to talk about. So... David Harbour, the star of Stranger Things, uh, was announced to was announced to be starring in an adaptation of Gran Turismo for Sony Pictures and PlayStation Productions. Uh, today, they announced Orlando Bloom from Lord of the Rings is going to be in the movie as well. But what gets me curious is that the Gran Turismo movie, a movie based on a video game series that is literally just racing your car around a track. Um, the movie is going to be based on a true story. <laughs> What the, fuck? the truth based on a true story the film is the ultimate wish fulfillment tale of a teen grand Turismo player whose gaming skills won a series of nissan competitions to become an actual professional race car driver okay that is weird it's it weird is, that they're making a movie at all yes it is weird that they're making a movie about grand turismo a game that is literally just about taking your vroom vroom around in a circle in a in a very realistic manner, uh, to be fair, but they are making it a live action movie based on a true story, starring the cop from Stranger Things, uh, Legolas from Lord of the Rings, and directed by the guy who directed District Nine. <laughs> I'm curious if people who are even fans of Gran Turismo would put two and two together and assume and and figure out that this is even using that license. Like when the trailer comes out, are they even going to know? Or are they just going to assume that Gran Turismo is a general racing term? <laughs> there is no way if they didn't put the Gran Turismo license, they, if they didn't use the Gran Turismo name and it wasn't made by PlayStation Productions, 
people would just think this is a fucking car movie. Yes. Do you remember the Need for Speed movie? Uh, no. <laughs> they they made a Need for Speed movie. I don't remember based that on at the all. video games. It starred Michael Keaton and Aaron Paul, and you know, had it not been for the Need for Speed logo at the end of the trailer, I would have thought it was a Fast and the Furious knockoff. And guess what? It was a Fast and the Furious knockoff. Because what kind of story are you going to put in a Need for Speed movie? There's a Porsche Gran Turismo. Is is Gran Turismo, is that what GT stands for? Like when people say like... Uh... I believe so, yes. Yeah, so isn't it just like a general term? Like, they, they could have called this fucking movie anything. <laughs> no one's going to know <laughs> that this is based on a video game. I know. It, it's so... I I don't understand it. <laughs> uh well anyway uh that's very bizarre uh that's yeah. but i guess i guess it's sony's making it so they don't have to l- pay a license to themselves so true yeah they were just like we need movie ideas uh and we'll take some from video games and they were yeah. like here's a license we have and they were like okay a racing movie here we we can figure that out yeah uh, uh, everybody's saying grand as- tourer is what gt stands for grand tourer I'm guessing that's different. I know. Yeah, because so like about Sega, racing. Sega GT. All right, here you go. It's Tweet of the Week. Tweet of the Week. Tweet okay. Of the week. Tweet of the Week. I'd imagine that was very loud. Uh, <laughs> hey, where's my Tweet of the Week? Oh, no. There it is. Uh, can I show this? <laughs> I'm going to block out most of this man's butt. Oh, uh, boy. Now, this is going to take some explaining to you. Oh, his butt was not blocked at all. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> me peeking out of showers with a classic. Uh, so this is uh, this is a meme on uh, Valorant. So there's, a, there's, a, there's an area in Valorant call, that people call the showers. And uh, this guy's peeking out with a fucking Glock and he's covered in suds. <laughs> it's a funny joke. Everybody laugh. Yeah. Ha ha. At ha, the very ha, least, ha. laugh at the fact that I showed a butt on Twitch. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, now it's the time of the show where we talk to you people. Yes, starting with people who left comments on last week's Wolf Den Podcast over on the YouTube channel, youtube.com, a slash Wolf Den Podcast. Yes. Uh, uh, we got from last week on the YouTube comments, we got Kev Likes Movies. It says the PlayStation Stars service or whatever the hell it's called really reminds me of the card system on Steam. Like you'll play a game for a while, get a message from Sony saying, hey, you've won a digital figure. And you'll be like, cool, what the fuck do I do with it? <laughs> <laughs> like, seriously, point. what do you do with it? That's a good point. Uh, straight blazing seven. Am I the only one who misses Will just yelling tweet of the week? He literally does it. Yeah, that's my voice doing it. <laughs> I can't do it from the house because I got two kids sleeping, and a wife would be very angry with me if I woke them up. <laughs> Tiffany Torgerson says FPS games make me motion sick, so this direct was perfect for me. I love farming sims. Uh. Okay, that's not an excuse for liking farming sims. <laughs> I mean, there's if, plenty if of games per- that are in first person shooters. No, but like a more relaxing game, you know, f- from a, you know, aside from a first person shooter, because farming games are definitely more relaxing than first person shooters. Sure. So I understand that. But I do, I have heard about uh, getting motion sick from a lot of shooters. Uh, this should be like a directory online that'll tell you if a game's going to make you sick or not. Yeah. Uh, and what settings to change because there are uh, certain games you can change the settings and make it so that you won't get a weird motion yeah. sickness. Um, anyway, uh, Luke Antone says, what is your number one announcement that would have made the direct a 10 out of 10? GameCube games. Yeah, I think... Uh, or or no, a new I, Mario. I think that the fact that GoldenEye was in it at all like helps out a lot, but yeah. it doesn't really help it go past an eight out of ten, right? Because they're just the whole direct as a whole. There was wasn't enough. Yeah, I I, I agree. Yeah, uh, Alex 
Beard says, now that the new Zelda has a hard date, does this affect when you guys think Nintendo's next console will come out? Kind of a little bit. A little uh, bit. I know a lot of people were thinking that Zelda was going to launch on both the Switch and the new console simultaneously, but now that does not seem likely. If you had to predict when Nintendo launches their ne- next console, what would be your prediction? So, uh, Breath of the Wild, or the new Zelda game, is coming out in May of next year. Yes. The Switch was announced in October, the previous okay. year, I believe. Am I right about that? Uh, let me just look that up. It was revealed. Uh, I think a date was revealed in December, and then more. The 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 the. Uh, no, we knew more in December, and then we had the whole price and date and games and everything was was announced in January. Yes. Um, and then it launched in fucking March, and I we everyone yeah. was shocked that it was so early in March. It was unveiled in October of 2016. Yes. So what I'm trying to say is there's plenty of time for Nintendo to be like, guess what? Uh, ah, tears, uh, tears of the Kingdom is coming out for the Switch too. I don't know because did Breath of the Wild have a hard date before the Switch announcement? No. I don't think so. Yeah. So No, because that would have that would have gave away when the Switch was coming out. Right. So I feel like because Tears of the Kingdom has a hard date, the earliest we would see a new Switch release is twenty twenty four. Because they want people to buy Tears of the Kingdom on Switch and get the most out of the Switch one last time before they move on to the next. Well, there's so, there's potential that the next Switch comes out in March. I don't think that's going to happen. Year. Yeah, I don't think that's going to happen, but the timeline from the previous Switch says that there's still time for them to announce it even before right. T- Tears of the Kingdom comes out. Um I I will so I don't think that Tears of the Kingdom is going to be on the next Switch. However, uh well, the Breath of the Wild launched on Wii U and on Switch. So there's it, right. I'm not ruling it out completely. However, the next Mario game. Mario's got nothing going on right now unless you count right. fucking Ubisoft. Um I think the next Mario has potential to come out on the next Switch. That might be next holiday. So, that's my two cents about that. Right. Anyway, now we're in the chat. Hi everybody. Yes. How are you doing? <laughs> Welcome. Good oh wait, no, we missed coming. we missed one. Oh, I did. Yeah, Christian, as the, I'm oh, not shit. much of an RPG guy, this Direct really didn't strike a chord with me. I was wondering, do you guys feel like Nintendo doesn't do enough to appease Western audiences? Like, I love Wind Waker and Metroid Prime, but maybe Nintendo values those differently. Yeah, it's uh, kind of hard to put perspective on it. Like, how am yeah. I supposed to know what Japanese audiences are interested in, you know? Yeah, I, there definitely does seem to be like sort of this mentality that like maybe Nintendo does put a lot of stock in the Japanese audience more so than, you know, the Western audiences. Yeah. Um, But at the same time, like you look at games like Twilight Princess, which was re which was made in response to the Western reaction to Wind Waker and things like that. Um, I don't know. I do think for the most part, though, Nintendo is very much, you know, because most, if not all of their games are made in Japan, they, they're they more focused on like what that what those what that audience is looking for in a game rather than what yeah. Western audiences look for. In a game. It's just easier for them to to, to, to yeah. do that. Um Yeah, I, I don't I mean, they sh- also like Nintendo or Japanese game developers. Uh, or publishers have a hard time. Uh, there's always, there's historically been a disconnect between the Japanese offices and the and the American offices. And the mm-hmm. Japanese offices for these big Japanese developers are gonna be the 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 bosses. They're gonna be the ones who make the big decisions. And yeah. America, the American offices usually have to fight to to get their way. So mm-hmm. uh, that's probably the case of what is happening right now at Nintendo. Also. Um, all right, now we're in the chat. 
Yes. Uh, Sui Kagura says, if I was uh, Nintendo, I'd space the next uh, Mario as far away from the movie as possible. <laughs> oh, you don't think they're saving the next Mario game to launch in conjunction with the movie, do you? I think that that's also a possibility. Oh, man. It's a big possibility. Because oh, they're, they're, that's a mistake. That's marketing to them. Yeah. And Miyamoto is involved in the making of the movie. I, I think they would r- launch the game before the movie, like right before, so that uh, it's out already when the movie comes out. Yeah. Um, I think they will have nothing to do with each other. I also think it's possible they could just fucking cancel the movie at any time. I think Nintendo could just be like, yeah. you know what? This movie sucks. We're out. We don't want anything to do with it. <laughs> let's let's Batgirl this thing before anyone gets I hurt. Think, I think they could Batgirl it. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, the U.S. loathed Wind Waker at the time. Such a strong reaction in the West would carry more weight, says Tron Kishi. I think they loathed it uh, when it was announced. I don't know yeah, if they loathed I mean, the game when it came out. Well, I the Wind Waker didn't sell very well initially. And mm-hmm. I think because of that announced, because, you know, the, you know, the graphic style was so mocked and hated at the time, like it had an effect on the sales of it. I mean, now everybody loves Wind Waker. Right. But I think I think that was a big deal because, you know, the GameCube already had, you know, an unfair reputation for being a kiddie console where Microsoft and Sony were putting out like more mature games. And now all of a sudden, The Legend of Zelda, one of the more mature games Nintendo made, looked like a Saturday morning cartoon. And that, because of the demo that we saw with the GameCube. Like right. That. It looked, yeah, it looked more like Ocarina of Time, a more serious version of Zelda. Yeah, and everyone was stoked on that. And then they announced yeah. Wind Waker, and it was way <laughs> different than what everybody was expecting. Um, somebody said, see you rocking a secret lab chair, says the real guy-ish. Uh, would you recommend it over anything else? Uh, it's a very good chair. Yes. Uh, I recommend it. I don't know what else is out there. I've only <laughs> really ever used the secret labs. I've used, like, DX Racer. I definitely like the secret lab more than that. Um Otherwise, I have not much to compare it to. I like the idea of like a nice desk chair, like a Herman Miller or something, but I need neck support. So like a lot of people Mm. promote like office chairs that like uh, are very ergonomic and nice, but they don't have a good neck support. This I I like. I like being able to go like this. Like when I'm when I'm just I like to like just lean back and and, and do my do my editing or, or, or gaming or something. Or else my neck starts to hurt. I'm like a Labrador retriever. <laughs> um, you can do exclamation point chair if you'd like this particular chair. Uh, they also have different sizes for the chairs depending on how big you are. Yeah. Uh, what else do we got? Um. Give us some questions, people. We're in the chat. Yeah. Look Talk to us. Uh, Ikea Marcus can't go wrong. <laughs> I have heard that's a good... Uh, Ikea's gaming collection is actually... Oh, yeah. That they do have a gaming collection. I forgot yeah. about that. Being 6'5", chairs are hard to, hard to shop for. They have, like, XL chairs, and you could type in your like, yeah. height, and, height and weight, and they'll uh, show you what's up. I'm like in between the XL and the regular one. Uh, I yeah. think I wasn't fat enough for the uh, for the for the <laughs> XL. Are you guys still excited for Gotham Knights at all? I'm kind of lukewarm on it. Yeah, I mean, I'll I'll play it, but I'll play it you know when I have a moment. You know, I'm not gonna mm-hmm. I'm not gonna rush out and play it on day one. I'm not gonna you know try and beat it completely because it just looks. I don't know. It's something feels off about it to me. Not saying that it's going to be a bad game, but it just doesn't look like something that is going to appeal to me the same way the Arkham games appeal. Um, but I'll I'll play it eventually. Circa asks, did you decide on a case for your video? So uh, before I mentioned uh, the Intel Arc thing, uh, I might be building a computer for that Intel Arc situation. Um, mm-hmm. 
So I asked Twitter about cases because I want like a nice looking case. If I'm going to build a computer for a video, I want it to be like really nice. Uh, and I got a bunch in my replies. Uh, here's one that's literally a garbage can, which I obviously <laughs> I won't use. This yeah. one's really cool. I like the colors because it's the kind of the Wolf Den colors. Uh, Fractal Pop Air looks very nice. Uh, I don't know if I want that, though. I might want it all to be black. Here's an air fryer. Yeah, dude. There you go. Uh, this one's pretty nice. Jerry showed me this one. Uh, Land Cool. Just nice and nice and uh, sleek. I saw one that was really cool. Here's a fucking literal tank. Um <laughs> One of them was really cool that I like. Okay, well, here's Hot Wheels. Um, yeah, I like Fractal. It looks like they have good ones. Um, this one. This one seems pretty cool. This one, uh, I don't like... I'm not going to RGB this thing. I think RGB is pretty stupid. Um, yeah. But I do like the way... I, this one kind of looks like a fish tank, and it has a window that goes all the way around. I kind of like that. But I do want it to be somewhat compact. I don't want it to be as compact as the NZXT that I currently have. Um, but I do want it to be a little compact. So I don't know. I'm going to have to do a little shopping around. Mm -hmm. uh, he says with tons of lights around him, uh, where's the red and the green? <laughs> okay, buddy. <laughs> Motherfucker. Uh, Bob, look up the uh, era ITX. All right. Uh, Jiva says if you have good Ooh. air purification in your place, an open ended PC uh, is a pretty cool, but it can be vulnerable. I'm gonna get every PC I've ever had is just a dust magnet. Yeah. <laughs> this is cool, but I do want a window. I do want it to have a window because I'm going to be showing off the GPU. Oh, it has a little talk, window on the top. I was talking to a friend of mine. He he needs an, he's in the market for a new PC case too, but he said he still wants one with a, with a bay for his disk drive, for his Blu-ray drive, and nobody makes those anymore. Yeah, that's a uh, give up on that. <laughs> <laughs> you, don't need, you don't need that anymore. I know it's just it's what a what a time to be alive. <laughs> uh, they can be static colors, whatever you feel like that day. The lights, I might want lights, like white. I like like all the keyboards I get. I always uh try to make it just a white color. Uh, yeah. Um, the 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 new one that I got for home. Uh, I had to friggin' put it on. Uh, I had to put it on my windows partition and change some fucking settings, but eventually I got it. So it was, it's just an all white, uh, uh, colors. Uh, here's another one that I just got sent by squeak for mayor. Oh, that's the one you, uh, I was looking at that already. Not really worth having a five inch bay anymore. Just get a tiny USB external drive. If you need to rip your blue rays or whatever, you know, back yeah. in the day, I remember when they used to make wacky things, uh, to go where that, CD drive went, and yeah. the most memorable one was an Easy Bake Oven. They <laughs> I had remember a, that. They, they had a five-inch bay Easy Bake Oven. Yeah. I mean, I have a portable Blu-ray drive. This thing works incredibly well. I use it very frequently, especially if I need to rip a Blu-ray movie or something. Um, I just don't know if I would use that to play like... I mean, not that they make modern games on disc anymore, but no, I don't know if I would trust that to play like a video game. Circa just sent me this, and this looks fucking awesome. I don't know how much I want a Caribbean blue computer though, <laughs> playing around, but this looks I mean, it would, awesome. It does kind of match Wolf Den blue. Kind of. That is really cool. That's really cool. Oh, it's, black, it's a little black window, though. That's pro oh, and you put the GP right up against the side. Okay, that's pretty cool. <laughs> that might uh that might all right, I like that. What is it called? Uh Master Box. That was my nickname in high school. No, uh hey guys. Thanks for hanging out with us. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolf Den Podcast is every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern, right here on twitch.tv slash Wolf Den. If you can't make the show for 
any reason at all, we always put it up as an archive version over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolfden Podcast. So you can go and check us out over there on demand whenever you want. If you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, you could do that as well. We're also an audio podcast on anchor.fm slash Wolfden Podcast or your preferred podcast service of choice. But no matter where you get this show from, folks, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review us because that helps us with placement on all those respective platforms. Uh, K Jack in the chat, uh, gave me an Amazon link for the, uh, black and white version. So I have, uh, wish listed the, uh, black version. <laughs> there you go. Thank you very much. Um, okay. That's, that's going to be the one I'm going to go with. It comes with the window and everything. Uh, they also have a pink version. It looks kawaii Ooh. desne. All right, who's streaming right now? Let's go with uh, who should we? Who should who who? I'm I'll who try my it? best to be live on Thursday. Uh, I make no promises though. I have to shoot video. Uh, so yeah, I'll hopefully see you then. You're gonna get uh, no banana suits. I think he's been taking a break from streaming, so uh, he's back now. Everybody, go say hi to him. It's Sean. He was in my Morbius video. He helped me out with that a lot. So I'm gonna use the raid feature on Twitch. Uh, thanks for watching. Make sure you're subscribed and whatever. Uh, and we'll see you later. Goodbye. Bye.